let me be a first partaker of your touch this morning let me be a first partaker of your touch this morning let me be a first partaker of your touch this morning Let me be a first partaker of your touch this morning. Touch me one more time. Touch my life. Touch my destiny. Touch my family. Touch every issue of my life. In the name of Jesus I must not leave this service without a tangible touch from you, Lord. Give me a touch of your peace. A touch of divine rest. A touch of a turnaround. A touch of laughter. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. In this service, the way maker we make a way for you. Amen. That thing you are afraid of, I speak with authority, it will be arrested by the power of God. Amen. In this service, the resurrected Christ will appear for your intervention. Amen. The resurrected Christ will silence every manipulation of the wicked. Amen. Whatever has been withheld from you, Today, the resurrected Christ will break protocol for the surrender. Amen. Say amen like a believer. Amen. In this service also, your financial story will change. Amen. Your family finances will change. Amen. Your career situation will change. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Somebody is going to get a 24-hour miracle in this service. If you are among those, your amen will be the loudest. Put those hands together for the Lord and please be seated. This month of April, all our teaching series for the Sunday service, our focus is on wisdom from above makes high flyers. And for the teachings for the Sunday, on the way to our promised land. Every high flyer is a product of another high flyer. Like begets like. Elephants give birth to elephants. Leopard gives birth to leopard. Monkey gives birth to monkeys. As a child of God, you must reflect your father. So if your father is the most high God, you are not permitted to end up as the most low child. You are not permitted to live the most low life. Eagles don't company with chickens. You must define your life. You must define by yourself whether you are an eagle or you are a chicken. Tell your neighbor, I'm on my way, on my way. to my promised land. Hear me? There is a place prepared for every one of us. Your promised land is your place of rest. 
your promised land is your appointed place of fulfillment. Your promised land is your appointed place of divine happenings. So wherever you are now that is contrary, that does not look like, that is making you look like a shadow of the promised land, there will be a change for you. That change does not jump on you. You desire it. You desire it before it is triggered. When Israel was in Egypt, there was a cry from them before there was a response from God. When there is no cry from you, there will be no response from God. They cried out and God said, I have now heard their cry. Before God said, I have now heard their cry, there was a prophecy that went forth on them in Genesis chapter 50 and verse 24. Joseph prophesied, he said, surely God will visit you. Surely God will visit you. And that visitation will bring about your exit from Egypt to your promised land. Every word of the Lord is a covenant promise. I'd like you to understand that in as much as God has prepared a place for you, if you don't see it, if you don't desire it, you will remain where you are. Seeing it is one thing, desiring it steers up a reaction internally, spiritually. It steers up a reaction for a change of position. That is why there must be need for you to be sensitive to every time and to every season. Every man's life operates time and season. To everything there is a season and a purpose under the heaven. So if you lack an understanding of the time and season, you may miss the blessing that goes with that season. You may miss the progress that goes with that season. You may miss the success that goes with that season. Why? You, you don't even know what is about to happen. Jesus wept, for they knew not the hour of their visitation. Hear me? Everyone in this commission, we are in our season of divine visitation. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. That is why you must be spiritually awake to be part of the move. If you are not awake, it will be happening. You will be hearing the testimony. You will be sharing other people's testimony, but you will never have one. But that will not be your portion. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. You must be spiritually awake to the move of God in this season. Jacob said, God is in this place. And I knew it not. So things have been happening and I'm just getting to know about it. God is in this place. Hear me? Something is happening consciously in this place. You have to be spiritually sensitive so that your destiny will not suffer slow motion. So that your destiny will not suffer a setback. Every move of God is initiated to move my life forward. To move your life forward. Every move of God is intended to move everything about you, your family, your work, your career, to your appointed place. But without proper positioning, there will be a displacement. 
We are in a revival. The spiritual clouds has been initiated to set up a lift, a change of position, a change of situation, an outbreak of the miraculous. Amazing liftings are ordained to take place. But where you position yourself will determine how God will reach you. But consciously this morning, we need to define what a revival is and what it means to you. What is a revival? Number one, a revival is a divine visitation ordained for supernatural change of position. It could be, it first of all starts with spiritual change of position. Because if you are not spiritually awake, good things cannot take place in your life. You cannot hear what God wants to do. You cannot be in position of what God wants to do. That is why in a revival setting, if you are a victim of spiritual slumber, you will miss what God has for you. If there is anything the enemy will do against you in a revival setting, is to increase your sleeping temperature. <laughs> that is, you begin to sleep beyond normal. Every little thing you sleep. You can be in church and be sleeping. You can be in church, you are not sleeping, you are watching Facebook. You can be in church, you are not sleeping, you are doing WhatsApp. That is to let you know the deadness of the person's spirit. You are not in a revival. If you are in a revival, your heart will be saying, Lord, something must happen for me today. Day to day, utter a speech. And night unto night, she knowledge. So for you not to miss your change of position that goes with a divine visitation, there is need for what we call spiritual alertness. You need to be spiritually alert. You need to be spiritually alert. If you are not alert, your change of position is not sure. You may be due for it, but God only visits people who are spiritually sensitive and spiritually alert. The part of the jaws is like a shining light that shines brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Yes! But it is for the spiritually sensitive ones. You can't be in a revival setting. Your results of last year is already depreciating this year. No! It's a sign that something is wrong. The progress you made last year is already going down. It's a sign that you are already failing. And before you fail physically, you have started failing spiritually. Before you fail physically, you have started failing spiritually. So to make your change of position sure, they go from strength to strength. Every one of them appearing before God in Zion. You must take your right place. Tell your neighbor, take your right place. must take your right place and not allow anybody to displace you. I hope you know that you can be displaced if you are not sensitive. You can't be displaced. They can, someone can use quarrel to displace you. Someone can use depression to displace you. Someone can use gossip to displace you. That's why people that are not spiritually sensitive in a revival they are cheap victims of the enemy. Cheap, cheap, cheap victims.
But when your spiritual antenna is super alert, <laughs> you know when danger is knocking. So he said, no, I'm pursuing something. I'm pursuing something. That's not what I'm here for. Do you know some people don't even know why they are in church? You are in church because there is a need for a visitation in your life. You are in church because you need the touch of God. You are in church because the heaven needs to be opened for you. You are in church because God needs to fight that thing that is making his plan not to come to pass in your life. You must know why you are in church. Because if you are in church and you are not in touch, you are a dead wood. What is a revival number two? A revival is a spiritual awakening that causes the rise of giants. By predestination, every one of us have been ordained to end up as a giant. You are not permitted to end up as a dwarf. A little one shall become like a thousand. A small one like a great nation. So inside every one of us, a nation. Say with me, a nation. But you need consistency in your hunger for spiritual awakening. If you are not spiritually awake, then you are spiritually asleep. Spiritual awakening affects you spiritually, affects you mentally, it puts you on the go. This is not my rest. There is a giant in me that must be born. It makes you think like a giant. It makes you think big. It makes you dream big. It makes you go for big things. When the giant in you is awake, you are on the go. You are on the pursuit. Why? You must be bigger. <laughs> he said, the Lord thy God increase thee a thousand times more. A thousand times more. A thousand times more. So I don't know what you are pursuing. You must define it. When you define what you are pursuing, spiritual awakening keeps you on the drive. You are driving positively with all your energy, with all your might, with all your strength. You are not satisfied at where you are. Why? Something big, something awesome has been predestined to come to pass concerning you. Oh, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard shall be the order of that day in my life. That thing that eyes have not seen must be a big thing. That thing that ears have not had must be a big thing. But you need spiritual awakening. You must be awake to spiritual things. You must be awake to spiritual things. You must not be comfortable on your present form, on your present level. Now hear me? No matter what you have now, no matter what you have now, if you are not working at it, by next year, it will reduce. True of us. A millionaire that succeeds in making one million, if he does nothing, it will drop to 700. True of us. Little by little, it will drop to 600. From there, it will enter 300. And the only thing you will be telling people, I used to be a millionaire. You are now a proverb. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? 
And I've been able to understand one little thing. People who have reached that realm, they don't sleep. Oh. Do you know what? They work extra harder to remain on top. They, they work extra harder to go higher. Have you seen a politician that desires to come down? Say the truth. Oh. Have you seen a politician that desires to come down? Do you know why they cannot come down? Free money. What did I say? I remember one that was a local government chairman in a, in a Kuala area. I think about, about local government. He was a local a government chairman, a member of the church. In the moment he left office, he came for welfare for children's school fees. Immediately he came in, Macanta told me that uh, that was the former local government chairman. I said, what is he looking for? He said, welfare for school fees. I said, me, give him. Lie, lie. So I said, you should come in. I said, you are a local government chairman before. What happened? He said, pastor, I can't understand. I said, you are a liar. You know, when they have money, they know how to visit hotels. And carry fine, fine guests. Now the money has finished. Their head is now correct. I say, we won't give welfare to you. Go and meet your colleagues. Let them give you the welfare. Now, when you were in, when you were in power, how many people did you give welfare? Where you sow, now you go chop. You didn't sow here. Go and chop where you have been sowing. You may call it wickedness, but it's a lie. It's a lie. It's where you sow, that's where you will reap. You didn't sow here, you didn't pay tight here. You can't even bring tight here because it is. Praise God. There is giant in every one of you. Don't die small, don't think small. The only way not to end up small is to remain spiritually awake. My giant is calling me. Scripture said the earnest expectation of creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. There is a giant in you because when that giant in you rises, it will help others to rise. When that giant in you emerge, others will emerge. Don't delay the emergence of others. Don't delay the emergence of other giants. You must keep pressing for the giant in you to come out. What is a revival? A revival is a spiritual platform for the outbreak of signs and wonders. I and the children God has given to me, they are for signs and for wonders in Israel. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 18. Say the Lord that dwelleth in Mount Zion. That dwelleth in Mount Zion. I am for signs. So the platform to trigger the manifestation of that sign is the platform of prayer. A praying church is a signful church. A praying church is a church of wonders. The more you pray, the more signs you experience. The worst thing that can happen to you is to live ordinary. The worst thing that can happen to you is to live your life to the predictions of men. May you never get to a point where men can predict you. Ah, I say may you never get to a point where men can predict you. If men can predict you, God is irrelevant. Meaning they can decide what will happen next. 
But God said, my ways are not your ways. Neither are my thoughts your thoughts. He says, the heaven is far from the earth. So are my ways far from your ways. And my thoughts far from your thoughts. You are a child of wonder. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? The amazing things God has ordained to come to pass for you, no man can program it. No man can understand it. That's why scripture says, what eyes have not seen, what ears have not heard. So you are ordained for unspeakable wonders. Unfathomable wonders. You are ordained to live like a surprise. When they expect that your door will open from here, God will change the direction. I hope you know man is a good at predicting. But hear me, don't live by prediction, live as a mystery. Tell your neighbor, live like a mystery. When you live like a mystery, you leave them to surprises. I can't understand this man. You will think that nothing is happening, but things are just working. When you live like a wonder, hear me? They may think you are finished, but you are about to start. I said they may think they have concluded your matter, but you are about to break through. If you are saying amen, say better amen. That's how to live. What are the proof of wonders? I mean, revival. One major proof that you are in a revival is that your heart never ceases to pant after God. As the deer pants after the waters, so does my soul long it for thee. Your heart never ceases to pant after God. O oh Lord, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul longed for thee, and my flesh tested after thee. In a dry and testy land where no water is. Your heart never ceases to pant after God. You can't pursue God and not see good. You don't get good by pursuing good. You get good by pursuing God. When your heart begins to pant after God, the lines begin to fall for you in pleasant places. That's a proof that you are in a revival. A day I spend in your court is more than a thousand years outside. I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tent of wickedness. Where will God find you per time? Where is your heart per time? Because we are... Where your, your heart is, that's where your treasures are. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. Where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. Where your heart is, that's where your treasures are. And where you place God will determine where he will place you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Where you place God will determine where God will place you. Where your heart is. God sees it part time. Do you know that God checks our hearts even when we are in church? God sees our heart. If he, if he sees every heart, then he has the right to decide who gets the blessing part time. There's what my, one of my mentors called Hatomita. Hatometer. God has what we call hatometer. So it, the hatometer checks the condition of your heart. Even while you are in church. The state of your heart. Is this person's heart after me? Is this person's heart towards me? So God checks our heart. 
What time? I, the Lord, search out the heart. And I examine the race to reward every man according to his deed. So please, you must define the state of your heart so that you will not be a loser when blessings are being distributed. Define the state of your heart. Is my heart in God or in things? Your heart can be in God and you lack things. When your heart is in God, things will follow you. That's why scripture says, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me. Goodness. Goodness talks about blessings. Goodness talks about favor. Goodness talks about amazing supply. Goodness talks about the glory of God. Evidential, touchable, feelable. That's why when you begin to flourish, they see you. <laughs> Amos, Amos. God is good. <laughs> do, you, do you know what they are trying to say? <laughs> Your change have come. Oh. <laughs> it will happen for you. Yeah. I said it will happen for you. Yeah. When they see you, they say, God is good. Oh. Yeah. If you are saying amen, say better amen. Yeah. So define where your heart is. Number two proof of a reviver. When walking in the fear of God becomes one's way of life. Walking in the fear of God is simply reverencing God. I can't do anything that will make God angry. I can't do anything that will make God offended. Joseph said, how can I do this wicked thing and sin against God? Nobody was there with him. He was the only person that was there with Potiphar's wife. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Now, nobody was there with him. He can do it and nobody will hear about it. But he will remain under the cage of Potiphar's wife forever. If you know Greek, I go talk. My talk. My talk. Hear this. <laughs> There are some things you do that ties you in bondage. If you know Greg, I will talk. Oh. So he will now become a regular slave. A regular what? Slave. But he said, no. If I, if I stop at this bus stop, it then means that I've missed that dream. Do you know your lack of fear of God can make you miss your dream? It can make you miss your appointed place. But his heart was in his dream. <laughs> Not temporary pleasure that will destroy his life. Satan knows how to corner you. I like what one wise man told me. He said, what you don't like can catch you. Let me repeat it to your hearing. What you don't like can't catch you. It is only what you like that can catch you. Satan always set trap for you with what you are interested, not what you are not interested. What you don't like can't catch you. Fornication can only catch you when you like it. Am I saying the truth? Before it catches you, the longing must have been there. So Satan arranged one person for you. Gossipers can't catch you if you don't like it. The thing has been in you, only waiting for someone to draw it out. What you don't like can't catch you. So you define your journey of the fear of God. Because destiny will take you to great places at every point in time. Be checking your heart. Do I still fear God? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Check your heart. 
These things we just mentioned now, they are preparatory to moving us to our promised land. Don't forget, Mike Mudok said, what you do daily determines what you become ultimately. What you do daily determines what you become ultimately. When your heart begins to pant after God consistently, God begins to change your level in faces. Though thy beginning be small, thy latter end shall greatly increase. You're on your way. I say you're on your way. I say you're on your way. And it takes wisdom to remain consistent to arrive at your great place. So if you must arrive at your great place, hear this and hear it well, it is your responsibility. I'm on my way to my promised land. I'm on my way to my dream land. I'm on my way to my place of rest, to my place of abundance. But there is something I must be doing now that must move me there. Location notwithstanding. I hope you know, Lafia is not a limitation to what God has in mind for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's not a limitation to where God wants to bring you to. It's not a limitation. If you can do the right thing, you will get to the right place. If you can be doing the right thing, you will experience the right opportunity. If you are doing the right thing, you will come in contact with the right people. All you just need to do is to stay at the center of God's will for your life. Center of God's will for your life. Maximize this season. Maximize this opportunity. Maximize this move. Maximize this move. Maximize this move. <laughs> I remember Bishop Abiyo said something one day that um, those days, some days, some years back, some people used to feel that uh, it's when they get to the city they will be spiritually hot. It's a lie. If you are not hot in the village, you will also not be hot in the city. John the Baptist started ministry in the bush, in the desert. Ministry does not begin in the city. Hear me? Whatever you cannot do now, you will not be able to do it later. So start now. If it is your dream land you want to get to, start now. Start now. Start setting your soul on fire. Start setting your soul on fire. Start setting your soul on fire. And God will be moving you in faces. Little by little, you are going. You are moving. Before you know what is happening. <laughs> you know, God is the one that arranged our opportunity. We will talk about opportunity in third service. He's the one that arranged our opportunity. He's the one that arranged our open door. Hear me and hear me where what you do now will determine what he will prepare for you for. May you not miss your own. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Creating your channels of money. How many of us like money? If you, if you don't like money, you are a winch. How many of us like money? <laughs> Let me shock you. If you have small money, you will fulfill small dream. If you have small money, you will not be able to help your brothers. Me, my wife, and children. That's where you will end. If you have small money, you will not be of help to the orphans, to the less privileged. 
People that always think of having, I don't want too much money, they are stingy. Say with me, stingy. Akagom. Aradite. But I want to talk on this this morning on what I call the God factor. The God factor is the principal factor when it comes to creating money channels. Because God is a God of ways. Say with me, God is a God of ways. He can create something out of nothing. He can make a way where there is no way. He can create rivers in the desert. Meaning, in seemingly impossible places, God can make a way. In seemingly impossible situations, God can make a way for you. So you never get to a point in life where you are stranded by man, by places, or by situation. Where no job exists, God can create one. Am I saying something to somebody? God can create one. In Isaiah 55, is it verse 10? Let me check. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways, say with me, ways, higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So God is a God of ways. He's never limited by one way. He has ways. Say with me, ways. In Genesis chapter 2, after God formed man, scripture says he put man, is it chapter 2 or chapter 3? He says he put man in the garden to till it and to walk it. So he gave man work. He didn't keep him idle. He gave man what? He gave man work. There was work for him. So there is work for you. I said there is work for you. Scripture says, say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with your soul. For he shall eat of the fruit of his what? Labor. Or not of your uncle's labor. He shall eat of the fruit of his labor. Say ye to the righteous, it shall be well with you. I like to let you know this morning that what you know is good, but who you know makes things happen faster. Do you agree with me? What everybody knows now in the secular world is do you know somebody? Do you know somebody? There is a place for do you know somebody, but there is one person that you need to know. His name is called the Almighty. He is called the El Shaddai. He is called Jehovah Jireh. He is called the All Sufficient God. He is called the Waymaker. He is called the Pathfinder. He is called the Trailblazer. One of my mentors said something. What you know is good, but who you know makes things happen faster. If you know God, you will know good. The people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. If you know man and you don't know God, you enter trouble. Man can change, but God is constant. The man you know can be dethroned, but God is ever on the throne.
Am I saying something to somebody? Man can go on transfer. Man can go on sabbatical leave. But God has never gone on retirement. He has never gone on break. So there is need for you to have what we call that God factor. That God factor. Now the reason why I say you need to have the God factor, scripture says, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. Gross darkness the people. Gross darkness means thick hardship. Whether you know it or not, the rate of job loss is on the rise. Am I saying the truth? Statistics shows Nigerians are more employed in America than Americans. Are you aware? Are you aware? Nigerians are more employed in America than Americans. Multitudes are looking for job, but few positions are available. Many are called. Now look at this. There is a role that you need to play for this thing to work for you. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? There's a role you need to play. Likewise in the kingdom, the harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I hope you know where I'm going now. We, must, we want to balance the equation. The God factor comes into play even here. If the jobs are few, and you are the one that determines who gets what. Who will you prefer? Let me show you from scripture. So that you won't say this pastor is wicked. Psalm 35 verse 27. Studio, do that quick. Let them shout for joy and be glad. That favors what? That favors what? Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which had pleasure in the prosperity of his what? Meaning they are serving. They favor his righteous cause. Now let's take a look again at Psalm 102, verse 13 and 14. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the said time is what? Verse 14 now. For thy servant. For what? Thy servants take pleasure in the stones and favor the dust thereof. Take pleasure in the stone and favor the dust thereof. Which means they take pleasure in my house. In making sure that things are working in my house. Which means I will now arise and show them favor. It is favor for favor. It is what? You favor his house. He favors your life. To confirm it again, let's go to Haggai chapter 1. As we read from verse 3. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet saying, verse 4, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses, and this house lie waste? Now therefore thou say the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but ye are not enough. You drink, but ye are not filled. We drink, ye clothes. 
you clothe ye, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put them into a bag with holes. Verse 7. Thou said the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. God is not a stammerer. Go up to the mountain and bring wood and build a house and I will take pleasure in it and I will be glorified, say the Lord. You look for much and lo, it came to little. And when you brought it home, I did blow on them. <sighs> Why say the Lord of hosts? Because of my house that is waste. And you run every man unto his own house. The next verse now. Therefore, the heaven over thee. Go back to verse 10, my friend. Therefore, the heavens over you is stayed from dew. And the earth stayed from fruits. And I call for a drought upon the land. And upon the mountains. And upon the corn. And upon the wine. Which means your work. And upon the oil. And upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon man and upon cattle and upon the labor of thy hand then Zerubbabel the son of Shiltia and Joshua the son of Josadek the high priest with all the remnants of the people obeyed the voice of the Lord their God and the word of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God has sent him and the people did fear before the Lord now, do you know why <laughs> your job is not producing for you? Even the one you are doing, you are already losing from my house. When you enter into a covenant to serve, he makes sure you don't end up in lack. He makes sure you don't beg. The God factor is the major factor. People are changing jobs, getting more better jobs. Now, time will fail us to read some of this testimony. But there was one we read about three or four days ago. He said, I, I made up my mind to serve. I made up my mind to serve. And they called me from somewhere where I didn't know who submitted my CV. Why do I working for God? God is moving men to work for you. But you think you are smart. Because of my house that lie waste. He said, therefore, I will withhold the dues. The due means favor. I will withhold favor from you. And I will make sure the earth born like oven for you. I will make sure your cattle do not produce. Which means your money will not increase. That's why people are doing business and they are suffering more losses. My house. My house. He said, my house. Consider your ways. I'm warning you. God is saying, I'm warning you. Consider your ways means change, oh. Change, oh. Because if not, you will enter into the class of things that things are hard for. Change, oh. Change, oh. Now we call it miracle banquets for jobs because God wants to favor you. Somebody is not saying amen. That's why I say, if they obey and serve me, they will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure if they obey, if they obey and serve me. They will spend their years in prosperity and their days in pleasure if they obey, if they obey. Malachi 3 verse 17 and 18. As we draw close now. Malachi 3 verse 17 and 18. And they shall be mine, said the Lord of hosts, in that day when I make up my jewels. And I will spare them as a man spareth his own son that serveth him. Verse 18 now. Then shall he return and descend between the righteous and the wicked. Between him that serveth God and him that serveth him not. Hear me? You are not permitted to serve God and lack jobs. Lacking job means lacking money. Am I correct? If you lack job, you also lack fulfillment. The essence of job is not just for fulfillment, but to meet needs. That's why anytime you are not being able to meet your need or meet your family need, 
you feel frustrated. But you cause the frustration. So having job is not just because you want to be fulfilled. We are tired. Enter office, make a condition, they blow you. It's more than that. You are looking for something. Am I saying the truth? Air condition can blow you and blow you into confusion. I'm saying the truth. The ultimate end of every job is meeting needs. If you are not able to meet your need or your family need, you are a failure. They will be saying, of what use do we have so, someone that is working in such a place and our needs are not met? Since I was born, and now I'm getting old. I've not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his children beg bread. God can't watch you beg bread. I say God can't watch you beg bread. That's why this God is a divine programmer. He knows when needs are, are responsibility are increasing in your life, and he knows the next door to open for you. But hear me, get committed to serving God. Let me read this testimony as we round up now. Number eight. Testimony number eight. At the beginning of the year, I believed God for a change of job. When the prayer reach project came, I committed myself to it. I also made a vow to God that if I fail to deliver and establish seven souls into this church, God should count me out of this double portion. Next level package. Presently, by the grace of God, I have nurtured and established more than seven souls in this church. The organization I submitted my CV at the beginning of the year is a member of the pensions board administration. On Thursday, during the week of spiritual emphasis, I was called for an interview. On Friday, I attended the interview. Four people were called for the interview, but to the glory of God, I was the only one chosen. Though I was the least qualified, God's grace distinguished me. The following Thursday, I was called to pick up my employment letter with good packages. I was the what? Least qualified. Look at the second testimony. In September 2012, God gave me a job as a financial controller of international organization. God revealed to me what was happening in that company and told me not to join them. So I made, up a, vow, I made a vow to him that I will neither steal nor allow anyone to steal. I worked with God despite several frustrations and threats of my life. At a point, I was given an escort everywhere I went. When they could not get me out of the company, they lure me to South Africa for a regional training. There I was told that my job has been terminated. I cried in the hotel I was lodged and called my zona pastor who prayed together with me. My wife and I also prayed and engaged in kingdom service in the church. Shortly after, God told me, son, those that petitioned against you, I have petitioned them. Watch and see. I've heard the bishop say, you who have lost your job, let God employ you. So I keyed into that and engaged vigorously in soul winning. I went to automated teller machine points, share tracks, and challenged them to allow God to employ them. Within two months, I received a job offer from different countries of the world. When I asked God which one should I take, he said, son, take that one. Today, I am the first employee of that company in Nigeria. I am so revered and honored. I give glory to God for restoring me ten times over. I like this testimony. Ten times what? In the second service, I will teach you how to live above job. Because who gives you job now can sack you tomorrow. But you can't sack my skill. You can't sack what I know. You can live above job. But you can start somewhere. Because scripture says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with all thy what? Might. Whatever thy hand findeth to do. Hear this as we draw close. 
No matter what you are looking for, God can open the door for you. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it better, amen. amen. There is a place called the prophetic that makes it cheap. Believe the Lord thy God and thou shalt be established. Believe also his prophet, so shall thou do what? Prosper. The prophetic connection is one unfailing connection that can open any door. Say with me, any door. Any door of job. I remember the testimony of a man who was to go for an interview. He went to meet Padegoye to pray for him. So when he prayed for him, he said, go. Thy position is secured. There were more than a thousand that went for the job. They took him as a manager. So he came and appreciated him for the prayer. He said he should pray again. As he prayed again, they took him. The former manager was, was resigned. He took his position. He came again for him to pray for him again. He now asked him, do you want to collect the company? <laughs> it's as serious as that. He prayed for him. They made him the overall manager. Now hear me. If you don't believe the prophets, now you they suffer. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Your prophet is your connecting link to any door you want open. Then we are there with the prophet helping them. Hear me? Your prophet is your helper to your open door. That's what I want to say to you this morning. Any door you desire open under God. I don't know the kind of... Oh, I just remember that sister in Benin. Now, the brother gave him a condition. This marriage will work if only I get a job. If I don't get a job, then that means I can't marry you. She had to challenge. One, she was AS. The other one is job. She now came. Pastor, I want to marry. I don't suffer so small. I want to marry. He said, pray so that he will get a job. I just prayed. I'm not the one that answered prayer. I hope you know I'm not the one that answered prayer. I just prayed and God had the small boy's prayer. The young man got a job in an oil company. So when the young man got a job in an oil company, he said, he's not doing again. I call him. I'm warning you. Revise back. <laughs> I'm warning you I can blow you brizo <laughs> so he came he said he didn't know what came over him I said whatever come over you let it go now <laughs> the guy don't stand for you prayer don't work you don't see another person that's what some boys do they are boys they are not men are you hearing what I'm saying when the thing now Someone has been standing with you praying for something to work. Now something has worked, you know. God punish you. <laughs> so I told him, I'm warning you. So immediately his head became correct. And now they are married. Hear me? God can make it happen for you. Yeah. Anyone believing God for a miracle job, I decree. This season, by the four winds of the spirit, let your connectors to those job appear. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Rise up to your feet. I want you to pray. In Second Chronicle chapter 15, they entered into a covenant. That anyone that will not serve the Lord thy God with the whole of his heart will be put to death. Which means things will stop working in their life. But hear me. If you want to connect to this favor, through this communion, 
your door must open. Any door, any door connected to any job you are looking for, through this communion, your door will open. But you are going to pray, Father, I enter into a covenant to serve you. In prayer, in soul winning, in praying for the advancement of this church, Lord, I make a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. Lift up your voice and pray from the depth of your heart. I make up a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. Leando perige kusadeata. Lekete prekle dozazo. I make up a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. I make a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. I make a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. I make a fresh commitment to serve you like never before. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. As you partake of this communion, whatever is manipulating disappointments, whatever is bewitching your CV, your certificate, by this communion, the barriers are broken. Amen. If you are saying amen, say better amen. amen. Any arrow fired against you for joblessness, the yoke is shattered in the name of Jesus. Amen. All I close, all heads bow. You are here, you are not born again. The entrance of Jesus is what opens your door. Wherever you are, put your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come unto you today. I know that I'm a sinner. Forgive me. Wash me with your precious blood. I reject sin. I reject Satan. Come into my life. Be my Lord. and Be my Savior. In Jesus' name I pray. If you pray that prayer with me, come quickly right now. Still words.